Is it possible to turn your Android phone into a tablet? Well, if you have a phone that has a built-in desktop mode, then yes, you can. Now, in order for this to work, your phone must have a built-in desktop mode. For flagship Samsung phones, this mode is called DeX. It allows you to connect to an external display wired or wirelessly and use your phone in a similar way to Windows or Mac OS. That means you can have multiple windows open at the same time, in different sizes, and even overlap each other. This is super useful when connecting your phone to a mouse and keyboard. There is a lot of power in flagship phones these days, and for many users, they can actually replace a desktop or laptop computer. There are other phone manufacturers that have a desktop mode. Huawei has a mode called Easy Projection to accomplish this. Also, Motorola has a mode called Ready For. Not all phones for a manufacturer will support a desktop mode, so refer to your phone's manual or contact support to see if desktop mode is supported on your phone. Unfortunately, Apple iPhones do not have a desktop mode, and as far as I know, they do not support external touchscreens. I myself tested two iOS devices with a touchscreen, and touch did not work. I was only able to mirror the display. While it is possible to accomplish this using phone mirroring, in that case, it would work best with a phone that can mirror a 16x9 resolution, and then you set it to developer mode to change the phone's DPI settings. If not, then you will have to root your phone to be able to specify specific resolutions. It's really more trouble than it's worth. The method I'm going to show you is plug and play, and you won't have to keep changing DPI or resolution settings every time you switch from the monitor to your phone. Now, how do I set this up? To turn my phone into a tablet, I'm going to be using my Samsung Galaxy S23 phone alongside this portable touchscreen monitor I bought from Amazon. All I have to do is use a USB-C cable to plug the two to each other. You have to make sure that your USB-C cable supports video out, but this monitor includes a cable for that. When plugging in my phone, either Samsung DeX will appear or a mirror of the phone screen will appear. If the phone screen is being mirrored, then I want to switch to DeX mode. Now that I am in DeX mode, I can start tapping on the monitor. You must use USB-C. With HDMI alone, touch will not work. When in DeX mode, the first thing you will want to do is go into the settings. Then go to Samsung DeX, Keyboard, and switch on screen keyboard location to TV or monitor. If this is not set, then anytime you want to use the keyboard, it will appear on your phone instead of the external display. You also want to set where the audio needs to be output to. You can have it output to your phone or monitor if it supports audio. You do that by typing the speaker icon, then the three dots, tap change audio output, and select either this phone for outputting to the phone, display device for outputting to the monitor, or any other headphones or speakers you have connected to your phone. Now just use the external display just like a tablet. You can open apps, move them around, have multiple apps open at the same time, type with the on-screen keyboard, and more. If you're using a mouse and keyboard, it really feels like a desktop experience. Some apps that go full screen will restart themselves every time you switch from window mode to full screen mode and vice versa. I'm not gonna mention the touch performance yet until I test some apps and also because touch performance should vary depending on the monitor that you use. But later in the video, I will do a mini review on this specific monitor that will talk about touch performance. Right now, I just want to talk about the general tablet experience using a phone. Now to test the application experience. First, some games. This is Fruit Ninja, and it felt fine playing it. You can notice that the swipe trail lags behind my finger, so that probably is going to affect gameplay but I didn't really notice. Alto's Odyssey has much simpler controls and the game played perfectly. Stardew Valley is another game that played great. You get much more screen real estate on a bigger display. It's especially helpful when you zoom in and out of the play area. 
Asphalt 9 isn't the type of game I would play on a mobile device, but I decided to test it because it brings up a few things we need to know. This monitor does not have a gyro sensor, so you won't be able to use tilt controls with the monitor. You can use the phone for tilting, but it does not feel natural at all. In this game, I would prefer to use the tap to steer controls, or if I have a gamepad, use that instead. Great Little War Game is perfect to use on a tablet. It's a turn-based strategy game. However, I did have an issue with it. On initial startup, when switching from window to full screen mode, full screen mode would be glitched. To fix it, I needed to exit the game while in full screen mode, then rerun the game again. Full screen mode would then work fine. All these games I tested required them to restart every time you switch from window to full screen and vice versa. I didn't really care about the gaming experience. I cared more about web browsing and content creation, so let me share my experience with that. Web browsing is one of the most enjoyable things you can do on this monitor. Having that extra screen real estate really enhances the browsing experience compared to your phone. Sketchbook worked, but you might not like the lag that happens when you move your finger around. The monitor I'm using does not have specialized pen support, so you can only use those generic pens or styluses that work on any touchscreen and offer no pressure sensitivity. I'm not aware of any touchscreen monitor that supports a specialized pen. Krita experiences the same lag. This app isn't really designed for a touchscreen experience yet. It's better to use it with a mouse and keyboard. LumaFusion is what I really wanted this monitor for. It would be great to work on a video on my phone when I'm away from home. And when I get back, plug in the monitor and have a bigger, more comfortable screen to work with. LumaFusion works great and you get a huge productivity boost when editing on a touchscreen compared to editing on a phone. The lag with dragging wasn't really noticeable here since I'm not drawing anything. FL Studio Mobile also worked great and it really helps to see more of your projects here. Again, the lag with dragging wasn't really noticeable here since I'm not drawing anything. I feel this is a cool way to use your phone if you're in need of a bigger screen for browsing the web watching videos, or some content creation. I was really happy with the audio editing and video editing experience. They work just like they do on my Android tablet. I'm not an artist, so if you are, the lag that happens when moving your finger around might be annoying. I do have issues with this specific monitor, but it wasn't too expensive. And it makes me realize that with a higher quality touch display, you can have a premium tablet experience from your phone. You also pretty much have an upgraded tablet every time you buy a new phone. The battery on my phone does drain faster when using the touch monitor, but I'm only going to be using the setup at home, so I will always have a charger close by. Do you have any interest in using your phone as a tablet? Let me know your thoughts in the description. Now, if you're interested in seeing a short review on the touchscreen monitor I used for this video, just continue watching. Now, here's a quick review of this monitor. It's a portable 14 inch touchscreen monitor by Wimaxit, and it cost me $170. To the left of the monitor, there's a headphone jack, a joystick and button to control the screen's on-screen display. The other side contains two USB-C ports and an HDMI port. Both of these USB-C ports provide video input and power. If you use HDMI, then you will need to use the included USB-C power adapter to power the device. If your device can output video over USB-C and can provide enough power, then all you need is one USB-C cable to use the screen. If your device can't provide enough power over USB-C, then you will need to use the second USB-C port to power the monitor with the included power adapter. With this monitor, there is no specialized pen support, so pens that require a specific screen won't work on this one. You will still be able to use generic pens that work on any capacitive touchscreen. The monitor does not include a protective cover, so if you plan to travel with this monitor, then you need to find a way to protect the screen. It does come with a plastic screen protector, but that's not enough if you're going to be sticking this in a bag with other stuff. The built-in kickstand is really cool and sturdy. On the back of the monitor, you can pull it out and adjust it to different positions depending on your usage. I like to set it low when using it as a tablet on a table and higher when using it as an external display or watching videos. Now about the touch performance. 
Tapping felt instant, and in FL Studio Mobile, it had no issues playing drums. However, moving a finger across the screen does introduce lag. The lag is really noticeable in drawing apps and when you move your finger fast. The monitor can detect up to 8 finger presses, but my Tab S8 can detect all 10 of my fingers. My major issue with this tablet is the brightness. Even at its brightest, I feel it's not bright enough. It's workable indoors when using it on its own, but really bad if you have it connected to a laptop as a second screen and the laptop screen is much brighter. Don't even think about using it outside on a sunny day. Audio is another sore spot. The monitor has speakers, but the volume is very low. My phone has louder speakers, which pretty much makes the speakers on this the monitor useless. You do still have the option to connect the monitor to external speakers or headphones via the headphone jack. So what are my final thoughts on this monitor? Well, due to the issues I have with its brightness, it's really hard to recommend it. It may feel fine at first, but if you're using it as a dual monitor setup with a laptop or desktop, the difference in brightness will be really annoying. I'd rather spend a little more for a monitor without touch and a better display. But when using it as a tablet connected to my Samsung phone using DeX, and I'm working in a dark room, it worked really well for web browsing, video editing, and audio editing apps. If you're an artist, then you will probably find the lag when moving your finger around annoying. But if you're an artist, you are a lot better off using a tablet that has specialized pen support with pressure sensitivity. Overall, I would avoid this monitor. But using this monitor made me realize that a phone can be a viable alternative to a tablet. I'm now in search of a touch monitor with a better display. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.